Hi, everyone. Welcome to this particular presentation. Of course, I still remain Obalim, your planning professional. So most times people ask me the question and say, Obalim, if I have a schedule, say, for example, in Excel, how do I import it into Primavera P6? <laughs> Don't forget that if you're entering all of those items, especially the activities, and if you have to type them one after the other, it's going to take you a whole lot of time. And not just the time, it is also going to involve a whole lot of effort. And just like me, I'm sure there are also a lot of people out there who actually do not like to type. So what we're going to learn in this particular lesson is how to be able to import all of those activities into our Primavera P6. In fact, it's going to save us a whole lot of time and then also make us work smarter as well as faster. Don't also forget that one of the hallmark of a good planner is not just the fact that you know how to use Primavera P6, but then also you're able to navigate fluidly and then also you're able to perform your tasks very fast. Okay, let's dive in real quick. So this is the schedule we're going to be working on. It's a very simple schedule. So we're building a community health center. I mean, if you've taken, if you've looked at some of my videos in the previous lessons, especially in this same YouTube channel, you will notice I've done this project before, but then we did it manually. We had to enter the activities one after the other. But I just want to show you how to be able to import all of these things once. So you see all these activities that we have here from the C1000 to the C1110, we're going to import everything once. So creating this schedule is probably not going to even take us up to four minutes to be able to do that. The activities, which is what we have here, then of course the activity ID, then their duration, as well as the predecessors, and that's what we're going to be doing next. So we dive into Mavera P6. Don't forget the project title is the Community Health Center. We're going to be creating that particular project right away. Of course, I'm assuming you already know how to create a project. Please, if you do not understand the interface and how to be able to create a project, I want to really suggest that you take a look at some of my previous videos that I've made. I've done introduction to Primavera P6. I've done up and running with Primavera P6. I've also done this particular project again, a step-by-step -step approach to be able to create it. Other than that, I've also done a couple of interview questions that people normally send to me, especially those who go for the hands-on interview. You get there, they give you some project and they ask you to create it. I've done, I've demystified a couple of them. All of them can be found from my channel. All you simply need to do is take a look at my channel and then you'll be able to find those videos. All right, so once again, you're welcome. Okay, so we want to create that particular project. And as usual, to create a new project, I go to File. Then I click on New. And then it asks me to select my OBS. I'm really not particular about where this project would be, so I'll leave it at All Initiatives. Then I click on Next. Don't forget, the project is Community Health Center. So under the project ID, I simply type in CHC. And then under the project name, I type it in full, Community Health Center. I mean, I really do not need the other part, so I can simply click on finish at this point. So I've been able to create a new project. And if you check, this is the project that I've just created within my database. To open the project, I simply right click on it and then I click on open project. Once I click on open project, Mavera will take me straight to the activities page of this new project that I've just created. And usually I like to do this, uh, but then it really doesn't matter the order, and I'll explain later. So next is to create my WBS. So I simply come to the WBS page within the directory. Don't also forget you can always see your WBS from the project menu. When you click on project menu, you're also going to see your WBS. But I really like using my directory. But I click on WBS within my directory, and right now it takes me to the WBS page. So let me quickly go to the brief and see the items we have with the WBS. There are three items here in the WBS, which are the groundwork, that's the phase one, then the building structure, which is phase two, and then the interior work, which is phase three. And let me just copy them one after the other. So I have the phase one groundwork, and I need to add those three items now under my WBS. So I simply right click on the project title within my WBS page, then click the Add button. Don't forget, this is the very first phase, uh, which I copied earlier. I simply paste it within the cell, which is phase one groundwork. 
I repeat the same process again. I go back to the project name. I right click on it and add again. Of course, you can also just add the three of them and just paste the name. So let me just add the remaining two. I right click the first line again, I add. So you can see I have the three items now. So I'll just copy the names and put here. I've done for phase one. So I'll just copy phase two. Just select everything and copy as usual, or you can simply do Control C from your keyboard. Then make sure the cell is active before you paste. And for the third phase, I also repeat the same thing, which is phase three, interior work. I just hit Control C to copy, and then I come here and I do Control V to paste. Don't forget the link to this particular schedule will be in this very page. So you can check the description part for you to see the link to this simple schedule that we are creating. Okay, so we're done with the WBS. I just need to do my final check. I can simply go to my chart view and then I see my WBS. So you can see the three phases of the project that we just created. Okay, good. So I navigate back to my Gantt chart and then I go back to the activities page. So we're done with the WBS. So if you take a look at the activities page, you're going to notice that we have the WBS already. The next stage we are now is for us to load these activities. And like I said, I don't have the time to start typing them one after the other. The activities, then of course the activity ID, as well as their duration. Unfortunately, we might not be able to import the predecessors. But I'll also show you a shortcut to be able to create all these relationships at once, especially where you have serial relationship like we have in this very case. All right. So to be able to do this, first, we need to export because Primavera can only import a spreadsheet of its own kind. But we need to first of all export this as spreadsheet and then update it and then import it back. So to export our spreadsheet, you simply go to File, and then click the export button. So you can see here you have various options to export, but then we're exporting our spreadsheet. So be sure to select spreadsheet, then click on next. I only need to export the activities. So check only activities in this case, and then go to next. Then be sure you're selecting the project that you are exporting, which is the CHC project in this case. So you check the export box and then click next. So you have different templates that you can use here. There's a GE, which is a general template and the resource template. I like using the resource template. Uh, don't forget I've already customized this template, but I'll show you exactly what I did. So select the resource template and click modify. So if you get to this point, I'm sure there will be some other columns that you have that may not be showing here. Because what I've done is the ones I don't need, I've pushed them back. So to push back a particular column, let's say, for example, this activity, these predecessors. Remember, I told you I'm not going to be importing predecessors, so I don't need it in the template. So I simply click this remove from list button to move it back. OK, and if there's any other thing you don't need, please do well to move them back. The original duration, I added this, so I'm going to move it back so that I can show you how I added it at the end of the day. All right, so we have some columns here. So you can begin from the same level that we have. So make sure you have activity ID, activity status, then the WBS code, as well as the activity name. So you can, first of all, remove every other thing and you should be left with these four. So there's also one other column we want to add, which is original duration. So here, come under available options, then go to group and sort by, and then list. So once you click the list button, it's going to arrange all of these things alphabetically, all the columns. These things are columns that you can potentially add. So once it arranges them alphabetically, simply look for original duration. That's that one I removed. I just want to add it back again. I just want to show you how it was added. So go to original duration under O, okay? So you can see original duration, then click on the add to list button to add it, and then click the okay. So once you've been able to do that, you simply click the next button and choose where you want to save it. The default folder where schedules are normally saved is under the document folder. 
Okay, but if you have any other location where you want to save it, simply double click within this particular cell. You will see this browse button. Click the browse button and choose where you want to save it. For example, I want to save it on my desktop. So I simply select desktop, then click the open button, then click on next. Once you get to this page, you simply click finish and you close this. So what we have done basically is to export this particular schedule. Once we have been able to export it, the next stage will now be to update it with those activities, duration and IDs, and then we'll now import it back. So remember, we exported it to the desktop. So let me quickly go to my desktop to be able to access this. All right, so in my desktop, you will see the activity, the CHC activities that we just exported. You can see it here under CHC activity. I simply double click on it to open the spreadsheet. All right. So once the spreadsheet is open, you will notice the columns that we have. We have the activity ID column. We have the activity status column. We're probably not going to be needing this for now. We also have the WBS code column. We're not going to enter anything there. But the key columns that we are going to be entering things under will be the activity ID, the activity name, as well as the original duration. Uh, these are the columns that we're going to be entering stuff under. So I go to that particular schedule. First of all, I copy all my activity IDs. So in this case, I like to start from the C1000 and copy everything. Remember, you select everything and copy. Then go to your Excel under the activity ID. You simply paste it there. So once you're done with importing the activity ID, please don't forget we also copied the WBS name, but don't bother about it. We'll do the correction before we now import it to our P6. So the next will now be the activity name. So again, I go back to the schedule. I select the activity name from site preparation up until the last one, which is final inspection. Again, I copy and then I paste it under the activity name column. Then the next part is the original duration. Again, I copy the dates that we have there. And once I've copied it, I simply paste it here under original duration. All right, so remember, we're not gonna be needing this phase two and phase three because we have already created them in the WBS. So simply right click and delete that particular row. Also do the same for the phase three, right click, and delete that particular row. Another thing you also need to understand is that Primavera doesn't recognize this as it is written here. So what we're simply gonna do is we want to delete the days. To make it faster, I simply do Control H, Control H in your keyboard, and then under the find word, simply type in days there, under replace with leave it vacant, and click the replace all. So once you replace all, Click on OK and close the Find and Replace window. So you notice all the days are gone and we're left with only the numbers. OK, so we have the activity IDs here. We also have the activity name here. And then we have the durations here. All we simply need to do now is to save this particular schedule. And then you may go ahead and close it. Then go back to your Primavera and import the exported file. So we go to file. This time around, we click on import. And when you click on the import, remember we're importing spreadsheet. So make sure you check spreadsheet and then click the next button. So at this point, it will now ask you where you want to pick the file from. Click this browse button and locate where you save the file. In this case, remember my file was saved at the desktop. So I select desktop, you will see the CHC activities here. I simply select it and then I click on open. Then click the next button. So this particular part is very important because it would ask you where do you want to import it to. Remember, we're importing it to this, our CHC project. So under the import tool, click within the empty cell so that you can see, double click there, so you can see this browse button. Then click the Browse button and select the CHC project and click the little green button to select, okay? So in essence, we're putting it under the CHC project. Then click the Next button. We're picking only activities here. Click Next and then click Finish. 
and watch it do the magic. So if you notice, it has imported all of those activities together with their original duration as well as the activity ID. So all I simply now need to do is to cut and paste them under the relevant WBS. Again, I quickly check the schedule. From the schedule, you can see that C1000 to C1030 are all under groundwork. So I come here, I select from C1000 to C1030, okay? And then I simply cut, right click and cut. Remember, they are under phase one, which is groundwork. So I right click phase one and paste. And then I repeat the same thing for phase two. Phase two are from C1040 to C1060. So I go back again to my P6, I select from C1040 to C1060. Again, I cut it and I paste it under my phase two. Then obviously the remaining ones are under the phase three from C7, C1070 to C1110. Again, I come here, I select from C1070 to C1110 as usual, I cut and then I paste it under interior work. So you notice that I've been able to literally do all of these things in less than three or four minutes. I mean, if it was just to do this, if not for teaching, it probably would take me less than two minutes to do. But once you've been able to do that, it saves you a whole lot of effort and stress in having to type out all of these things, the activity IDs, the activity names, as well as the durations one after the other. So once you've done all of that, the next stage is now to create the predecessors. So for us to create the predecessors, you can see in this case, these activities are serially linked. All we simply need to do is select from the first activity up until the very last activity, which is final inspection. Uh, let me bring down my detail view to show you that everything is selected. So once you've selected all of that, simply right click and then you're going to see link activities. So click on that link activities. And once you've clicked on link activities, you simply hit enter in your keyboard. And then, ta-da, you will notice that all the predecessors get populated all at once. Of course, don't always forget to schedule. So you click your schedule button and then apply selected data day to all open projects and click schedule. And almost immediately, you're going to see the relationships that you've created and then the activities that are on the critical path. Now, all of these concepts are the things I've explained in some of my previous videos in case you don't understand them. The purpose of this is basically to show you how to be able to import from spreadsheet into your Primavera and then save you a whole lot of time in creating your schedule. I hope this particular video was quite informative for you. Please note that you can take a full course with me. You can simply contact me on this WhatsApp line. Uh, even though I try as much as possible to provide a whole lot of information in my videos, but one key thing is certain. A lot of people just learn the software, but they don't understand why or the reason why they do some of the things they do within the software. So sometimes I get a lot of people that will tell me that I've watched your videos, but then I went for interviews and they asked me certain questions and I was not able to give them insight or right answer about those particular questions. There's a difference between knowing the software and then knowing what project planning, scheduling, as well as control is. Because you need to fully understand the concept of project planning and control before you can now begin to even translate it into the software. And that's the challenge a lot of people may have. They just learn the software, but they don't understand the reason behind. And that is where the training that I do usually comes in very helpful because I'll give you a deeper insight into what you do, why you do them, and beyond that, you'd also be able to learn a whole lot of concepts so that you don't just know about the software, but then also you're well-grounded in project planning, scheduling, as well as control. So if you need further training, you can hit me up on this particular line on WhatsApp. You can also send me an email. Otherwise, if you choose to take a self-study path, I also have a full course on Udemy, which you can also take advantage of, and I'll put the link in the description below. Once again, I hope this session was quite informative for you. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.